Hey guys, Jeb Brooks, greenergrass.com. I am in Australia right now, and I'm getting ready to head back to the United States. It's gonna be about a 20 or 22 hour journey to get back there. And so in order to do that, I've gone ahead, I've called an Uber. So let's hop in the car and uh, head off to the airport. All right, so um, getting to the airport early is pretty important. And, oh, hey man, you, you don't mind if I film this is for YouTube? Yeah, no, go for it. Okay, for uh, it. well. You got many subscribers? Yeah, a few. Uh, well, you wanna say hi? Yeah, sure. Hello, how are you? Always get to the airport on time, or early. Well, it's especially easy when you have a great Uber driver like Dennis Bunnick. Hey, if you haven't checked out his channel, please do it. Uh, off to the airport. Here's the, uh, here's the airport, have a great trip. Well, I certainly will. Thank you, Dennis. This has been a great ride. Uh, five stars all around. That was a get out. <laughs> <laughs> all right. <laughs> As you can see, Dennis and I had a good time. Be sure to watch the end, I've got some outtakes from that. Anyway, there was a quick flight from Adelaide up to Sydney, a little bit of time to explore beautiful Sydney, Australia before heading to the airport. I can't believe our good fortune. This aircraft behind me, November 706 Delta November, has been recently retrofitted with the new Delta One suite. So this is the very first time this configuration with the Delta One suites in a seven, uh, triple seven rather, uh, has come to Sydney. But first things first, a visit to Terminal 1's Sky Team Lounge, located just across from gate number 26. There's plenty of seating in this lounge, but the real highlight as far as I'm concerned is the opportunity to spot airplanes right out the window. This lounge is very busy. I've never seen it without a pretty significant crowd. There's plenty of food options, and there's also an open bar that offers self-service. Make sure that you get to your gate on time. I, I like to be there maybe 10 minutes before boarding, uh, just to be sure I'm not missing anything. Also, keep an eye on those departure boards to make sure you know if you're on time or delayed or anything like that. Delta expects to offer this product on this route full-time in April of 2019. But for now, the anticipation builds as we enter this newly refurbished Delta One cabin. The first and only other time I've sat in this seat was on the Delta A350 inaugural flight from Detroit to Tokyo Narita. That was a really special occasion, and so, of course, is this one. We'll have plenty of time to explore the seat in great detail over the coming uh, few minutes. But for now, I was very pleased, very excited to see this special thank you card from the Sydney airport staff. This thing is incredible. I'm so excited to be on uh, one of the very first 777s, just purely by chance. I had no idea this aircraft was on this route. Only a handful of them have been retrofitted, so this is super exciting. I find this seat to be well organized. There's a spot for the noise canceling headphones, two universal power ports, two USB ports, a headphone jack, more storage right here, buttons of course to adjust the seat which I found to be a little too sensitive, more buttons down here in case you're in the lie flat position which we'll take a look at in just a little bit. There's also storage there and plenty of room for a pre-departure beverage. I found the placement of these adjustments to be a little challenging. It was easy to brush up against them and, and move the seat sometimes unexpectedly and sometimes rather quickly. There are plenty of adjustments and it's a very nice feature, don't get me wrong. But before too long, we'd pushed back and were taxiing out to the active runway. There was plenty to see on the way out there, though.
At one point, Delta offered pajamas on this route. That's no longer the case. Instead, you'll get slippers and an amenity kit, which includes everything you might need on a flight like this of 13 and a half hours or so. Delta's in-flight entertainment is impressive for its choice. There's a lot of them. But the real shining star of this IFE, in my opinion, is the screen. Not only is it a touch screen, but it's massive, much larger and brighter than the old uh, screens on the 777s. The in-flight map is nice, if mm, a little slow. Delta are very proud of their LSTN headphones. These are noise-canceling headphones provided for passengers to use while they're in business class, or Delta One. As subscribers to this channel know, I have very high standards for headphones, and these, well, just aren't that great. Sorry, Delta. I prefer these QC20s from Bose. They're small and compact, able to fit easily into my bag, and they provide great noise-canceling benefits. Wi-Fi is allegedly available in this flight, and I've been able to use it in the past. Unfortunately, for some reason, I just couldn't get it to work this flight. I had no trouble with my favorite feature of this seat, the door. Now, as you can see, it doesn't go all the way to the ceiling, but it certainly does provide some privacy, and it's very easy to open it up if you want to get somebody's attention or head out of the seat. Shortly after takeoff, I did my part for the punch list. It appeared this piece of the seat had popped loose, so I pushed it back and uh, sort of secured it. Hopefully it stayed that way. The tray table is accessed by pressing that button. It's very nice, and then it slides back and forth. Unfortunately, if it's out, it's hard to get out of the seat. The crew began service pretty soon after takeoff. I started with a drink from the bar and some warm nuts. I've been very impressed with Delta's catering lately. Unfortunately, this grilled yellow fin tuna didn't hit the mark. But the lamb was truly spectacular, very well prepared. Another comment about the seat. I really like when I'm able to both eat and work at the same time, and this Delta One suite accommodates that. After all, if I'm booking a business class seat, there's a good chance I'm doing it in order to get work done. It's nice that they facilitate that here. After dinner, I chose to explore the cabin. The economy class is laid out in a 333 configuration. That is industry leading since most airlines go for 343 in the economy class. Delta's premium economy is branded as premium select. It's laid out in a 242 configuration. Business class is of course laid out in a 121 configuration. Now, there really aren't any seats that are good for couples. So if you're looking to communicate with somebody, you might want to choose a different cabin or a different airline. We've got some good news and some bad news. The good news, obviously, is this cabin is incredible. The bad news, though, is that there were three labs in the old Delta One, the old business class on a 777, and uh, the third was across from seat 10C, and it was massive, which was great because it was easy to change clothes in there. Unfortunately, that one is gone. It's been replaced by more premium economy seats. So, uh, so that's gone. The good news, though, is that seat 10C is gone as well, which was that terrible seat that, uh, if you were sitting there, the, the, the lav light shone in there pretty brightly. So good news and bad news about the lavatory situation here on, uh, on the new Delta One uh, and the 777. Delta One suites include a blanket, a large pillow, and a smaller one. Having the extra one is, is pretty nice. This bedding is by Weston. It's Weston Heavenly Bedding, and it is really quite good. Here's the bed laid out in its fully flat position. I found it to be very comfortable. I'm 5 feet 11 inches tall, or approximately 180 centimeters. I didn't find it too narrow or confining. It was a very nice bed. Which was good, because I was ready for some sleep.
Is there a more appropriate midnight snack for a flight back to the States than a hamburger? I think not. And this one was quite good. The details in this Delta One suite are really beautiful. You know, I don't want to be overly critical of the seat because I really do like it. I mean, it's, the, the, the door is incredible. The screen size is, is massive. It really feels very uh, comfortable and compact. However, if I have to be a little bit critical, uh, it would be about storage. It would be about like where to put stuff. As you can see, I kind of got wires going everywhere, which is annoying to me. I wish there were a better solution for that. In my experience, U.S. airlines tend to keep their seatbelt signs on more frequently and longer than airlines from overseas. Now, this is an important safety component. I certainly get that. But this flight, this particular flight, that seatbelt sign was on for almost the entire time we were in the air. Soon it was time for breakfast and a sunrise. So, how did Delta do? There are four categories I think are most important to the onboard passenger experience. They're the seat, the entertainment, the food, and the service. The seat is spectacular. Despite the few storage challenges, it's a great business class seat. I'll give it five stars out of five. Delta's entertainment is fine. The screen is large, and I'll give it four out of a possible five stars. The food was good. Unfortunately, that fish was well, really bad, but the lamb and the burger more than made up for it, so Delta earns four stars here. Finally, Delta's service can be somewhat hit or miss. A great crew is great, and I find more of these than the alternative. Fortunately, this was one of the great ones, and I'll give them five out of five stars. That leaves Delta One's 777 suite with 18 stars out of a possible 20. Leave me a comment. How do you think they did? Hey guys, Jeff Brooks, greenergrass.com. I'm in Adelaide, Australia, where I've just been visiting Dennis Bunnick from Dennis Bunnick Travels. Now, I reckon his videos are pretty good, but let me know what do you think. Leave a comment below. Well, well, thanks for that, Dennis. That was really that was really helpful. And if I sound like that, do let me know in the comments because I'm really curious to hear what you think. He does. He does sound like that. You should hear his Australian accent. Good eye, mate. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> mm, yeah, I'm sure we all sound just like that. <laughs> Hi, guys. If you like this uh, video, uh, click the thumbs up button. If you didn't, tell everybody. But then double click that thumbs down button. Uh, only kidding, of course. In the meantime, um, as always, happy travels. No, sorry, that's not his ending. His ending should be uh, well, between now and then, we'll see you in the sky.